How are you feeling? Oh, I feel fine. Good. How long have you been here now? I came in on the 10th. This is the 26th, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is the 16th day. What brought you to the hospital? Well, there's two things, sir. It's, uh, one was an injured leg from a robbery, which I am the victim of, and was a, a thought from my mother and brother and sister-in-law that I needed uh, mental care. Uh -huh. Could you tell me about this robbery? Yes, sir. Uh, it occurred at 4 o'clock Saturday morning, April 5th. I would be off from work. But I had to go to the plant uh, to get my check, my paycheck. So I, since my driver license was revoked three years ago, I had to get my lady friend to drive me to the plant to get my check. And she did, and her girlfriend, Ann, was with us. So I went inside the plant, and she parked the car in the parking lot at the plant and obtained my check from my boss, and then he came out and introduced him to my girlfriend and her girlfriend. We talked a few minutes and drove away. We went back to the spot supermarket, 24-hour market, on Western Avenue and Guardian, and cashed my check and bought some groceries, in which I was living with her in her clear home in Guardian, and I was paying all the bills, including an $84 a month payment on her 56 family car, her $18 a month rental space on her $7,000 trailer home, which she owns, and it's very nice and modern, her utility bills and what have you. I was putting all the bills. Well, after all that was said and done, we went out to have a little recreation on Friday night. We went to two or three different bars. Had uh, three or four beers. And this girlfriend of hers is something wrong with her. She's either a narcotic or something else is wrong. I have good reason to believe she's a narcotic. She is a rebel rouser, a troublemaker. That split me and my girlfriend up to the given time. So that Friday night before the robbery, we were in a bar located in Gardena. It's a fine place and a nice, clean place. The owners are very nice. But we got involved in an argument because of this girlfriend and my lady friend. So I cussed them both out. When I got sped up so far, I couldn't take them alone and walked out of them. And then right after that, I blacked out. From that time on, that minute on, I never knew anything else where I was and what happened. Until I was, when I came to, I was walking through the doorway of the Guardian Hotel, located at 825 1A, Guardian Boulevard, Guardian, California, which is where I had a room in, number six. That's when I came to. I started up the stairway. As I always do, the stairway is very steep. I was guiding myself along, and I was not drunk, or I wouldn't have known this much about it if I had it been. Uh, I was guiding myself along on the rail, stairway rail, with one hand, the right rail, as I always do going up. I got up a little over halfway, there's a platform. That time in the morning, it was about 4 o'clock, so the hotel manager said, he knows the clock, the time I yelled for help during the ruckus. Someone, evidently, that time in the morning, the uh, light uh, directly over the stairway was turned off. Of course, to save electricity and cut down on utility bills. Uh, someone, which I do not know whether it was a man or a woman, could have been either one, I had no time to identify anybody. Give me a quick thrust, a caddy shove. And from the quickness, it could have been a woman, very easy. From the quickness and caddy-like action, 
which I know women well enough to know it could have been a woman. And I have reason to believe it was a woman that did this. And there's more reason than that later I'm coming to that it was a woman instead of a man that did this. What happened? I yelled for help as loud as I could. One time I got to the bottom of the stairway, I became unconscious. But the hotel manager had been aroused, so he and one of the fellows that rooms there came down. He said he noticed the clock. The time was 4 o'clock. By that time, it was Saturday morning. We had been out Friday night. Well, that was Saturday morning, 4 o'clock. He is the one that established the time. Well, he and his wife and son had been very, very friendly and nice. The most wonderful place I ever lived in my life. Up until this occurred. He had a very sudden change toward me. And I know beyond any shadow of doubt that he knows plenty about this robbery. And I feel that he has been paid off. When you got shot, did you get hurt? You said you found yourself at the bottom of the stairs. This leg, which I showed you, injury, is a result of that shoving down a steep, getting me rolling down a steep stairway with a caddy-like action of a quick shove. Can I see it? Yes, sir. These pants are a little small leg, but I'll try to get it up. Shall I stand up? Yes, would you please? Mm -hmm. You certainly did get a good bruise. Yes, sir, I did. No question of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This wrist was also bruised, and it was swollen up, hand and all. I had four, four x-rays of that, and about 15 on my leg. They could not find any broken bones. The wrist is perfectly well, and the leg is getting well, well that's good. by the good treatment I'm getting here in this hospital. Did they get anything from you? $31.75. Good money. Robbery was one motive. There's another motive. I had room number six rented. Rent was paid up. A very fine, clean bed. Nice white sheets. Very nice and modern. I was well and happy, satisfied with the room and everything. And the price, $12 a week in advance. The manager of the hotel and his family had been so nice and I thought I was living in paradise till this happened. But he changed so suddenly after this happened. I know he is guilty one way or the other. There's no mistake about it. Uh, they carried me up to my room number six, pulled my clothes up on me, put me to bed. Knowing that I was injured this bad, why didn't they call an ambulance and the police? That's the $64,000 question I would like to have answered. Mm -hmm. Has anything like this ever happened to you before? No, sir. The first time in my whole life. And how old are you? Forty. September the 2nd, last fall, I was 40, last September. Where were you born? Mount Ida, Arkansas, county of Montgomery. How long did you live there? Well... I lived there until 1935, the first time I was ever out of the state of Arkansas. That was the, in the spring of the year, around the 1st of April, just about 23 years ago was April. My mother and stepfather ran off, left my brother and I in an empty house on starvation on my father's home, uh, government homestead farm that he homesteaded from the government when he and my mother were young when they first married. Your mother married your stepfather yes, because your father old. died or because of divorce or for what reason? She married my stepfather. She told me because she was aware that after my father died, she had no way of earning a living for us children and herself way back there in the jungle, so she married for support only. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. Not okay. for love, but for support. What kind of a woman is your mother? Well, sir, I really believe from the bottom of my heart that my mother is a wonderful woman. She has been taught the wrong way of life 
And I know that it isn't her fault. What isn't her fault? I know it isn't her fault. I, I say, what is it that, that is not her fault? That she has treated her children, her three sons, as she has, I don't feel like that she is to blame. What has she done? She put all three of her sons, the oldest one is dead now, killed in an accident, Compton, California, in 1947, the month of July. He's a wonderful guy. Much, much better than this other brother that is now living. When he was 14 years old, he was kicked out from home because of my stepfather. Sent to Nashville, Tennessee, to an automobile mechanic school. In 90 days, he came home with a diploma, which we still have, with all of his graduation papers, and he knew it all by heart. He could tell you everything from one or the other about an automobile, and he was 14 years old. He had that kind of ability inherited from his parents, and so have I. But this other brother doesn't have that sort of thing. He, he isn't talented in any sort of thing. He has proven on his job where he's working for 10 long years he's been there that he can do it. He learned to operate an extrusion press, in which he still operates. But he doesn't have the function to get up and go and the mechanical and talented ability that my oldest brother and I have, and my sister too. Therefore, since we were little tiny kids, I can remember things since I was three years old. I remember that young. Lots of things when I was three years old. We were living in Calvin, Oklahoma at that time. Four of us children, my mother and stepfather, on a farm. farm. My first school, when I was six years old, was Hilltop School, Calvin, Oklahoma. That fall after school was, uh, the next fall, just about the time school was to start again, we left there in two covered wagons on an old Pioneer at the age of 40 and drove back to my hometown of Minot, Arkansas on a covered wagon. And uh, as we grew older, as children, there was more friction, of course, with my stepfather. He was a pretty mean man. He had five boys in California here, all in Los Angeles and Gardena, by his five first two. wife, by a former marriage, before he married my mother. He always told her, until they came to California in 1935, that he only had four sons by his first wife, and swore to it until they got to California, she found out, and she met the fifth one. He never could explain it to her. He denied the youngest one being his. This leads up to something else. Said to me, he kind of it. On the way down, of course, they'd already been checking through our records of life history. He said, do you suppose that you could have had a half-brother? That was 18 years ago when he said that to me, 1940. I said, well, sir, I never had thought of it. Never had even dreamed of such a thing. But I said, now you have put me to thinking about something and for 18 long years, I'm still wondering why that deputy sheriff said that to me. And that goes back to this fifth son, which my stepfather had by his first wife, supposed to be by his first wife. Supposed to be? Yeah. Because he always swore to my mother from the day he met her until he died, until they came to California, rather, in 35, met this fifth boy by his first wife, that he only had four sons. And you're a little suspicious of it. Yeah, and this county that was sure 18 years ago in 1940 asking me, he said, do you suppose you could have ever had a half-brother? Well, now I have access to an enlarged picture of my father and my stepfather while my father was still living before I was born, this picture was made. 
making liquor at a wildcat liquor distillery, owned this homestead farm. My father homesteaded in the government there in Arkansas. I have a big and large picture. All right, there's a fact there. My stepfather was down there when my father was still living. So there is a possibility that my stepfather could have gotten my mother pregnant while she was still living with my father before he died. And this other son could have been my mother's and stepfather's. It was the youngest son of the five. So, after this deputy sheriff 18 years ago said that to me, I've summed it down to that point. I've got that forward. I'd like to get back to the robbery that you told us about. You said that there were two motives. Yes, there's a second one. What was uh, the second motive? Well, when I regained consciousness, six hours later, I had a new alarm clock sitting on my dresser in the hotel room next to my bed. I looked at the clock exactly straight up 10 o'clock. Well, there was the time I fully established, six hours I was unconscious. The room was unlocked all that time. They put me in there and didn't lock the room. Due to the fact that my leg was injured so bad at that time that I couldn't get my own clothes on, I hollered for the manager to come help me. He came dashing into the room. He says, my God, man, he says, where'd you get all that lipstick? I said, what do you mean lipstick? I hadn't even glanced into the mirror, which was almost before me then because I was suffering so much with my leg. He said, look in that mirror. I looked in the mirror and sure enough, I was smeared some lipstick all over my face, or with lipstick rather, all over my face, my shirt collar, and my hands. There is the second motive for this crime. That's why I'm inclined to believe it was a woman that showed me down the stairway and that smeared the lipstick on me after I was put in my room. So that room was unlocked for six hours before I regained consciousness. And the motive was jealousy, trying to split my girlfriend and I up. That was the second motive, and the other one was robbery. And there's a third motive, to get me fired off of my job, because my sister-in-law found out by me telling it in their home that men were being fired off of my job rapidly for one reason or another. And absenteeism is one reason for being fired on that job I have, regardless of what's wrong with you. So they were going to fire me. Of course, the state labor law will not let them, of course, because I was injured. You cannot fire a man when he's injured he's not able to work under the state laws of California. The federal laws either won't put it for that. I know quite a bit about labor laws and labor unions and state laws and everything else. I've had a lot of experience. Who was the woman? The what? Who was the woman? You, you mean who do I think is the suspect? Yeah. Well, I am pretty sure that I can prove beyond any shadow of doubt in court before I am true with this case, the woman is my sister-in-law, my brother's wife. And what makes you think that? Because there's two, two motives for her being after me, as she is. The first motive is, I believe I can prove beyond any shadow of doubt in court, for I'm proved, that she is a German Nazi spy working against me and lots of other people in America to uproot our system of government, one way or the other, the use of narcotics by buying off votes, by paying people money that is being supplied to her by that organization. And I do know definitely, and my brother will have to tell this, and so will my mother, they know it too. They've got to tell it in court. That she is mixed up with a, a vicious, Mickey Cohen type narcotic gang from Long Beach, which used to be located on Pine Avenue in Long Beach. Now, the reason I know that much, some
17 years ago, this brother that's supposed to be married to her got involved with this gang of hers. She got him involved. And my ex-wife is in on this. She knows all about it, too. Her name is Bessie Irene Wilhite. That's her legal full name. I don't know where she is today, but she can be got found for easy to go to court. She knows plenty. Well, then the whole works. There's my mother, my brother, his so-called wife, and what my ex-wife. What do you mean his so-called wife? Because I've never seen a marriage license. They went to Las Vegas and came back with rings, and that's all I've ever seen. And I doubt very much if they are legally married. You must have a lot of feeling about her. Well, I have good reasons for that. If she was in here right now, I'd go walk right up and hug her neck. Because I believe what the Bible says. And when they slap me on one cheek, turn the other and let them slap that. But go ahead and prosecute them in court if they're guilty. That's the way I feel. Yeah. How do you suppose she got tied up with this organization? I think she came over here during World War II, while the war was raging. I believe that she came over here after Germany submitted and gave in. She's German? Bound to be. There's no question about it. You say she's bound to be. Does she speak with an accent, or has she ever been She accent? tries to speak an uh, American Southern accent. With a Southern she, accent? She fails. Mm -hmm. She fails in most every conversation that I've ever had with her. And she alleges to be from the South? From Florida. I see. But she fails to bring out any uh, American Southern accent. She'll start it all right, but she'll quit it for a few minutes, then she'll go back to it again. Well, there's a clue right there. That's where I first started trapping her. Where's her speech? And uh, my brother and my mother, and I also have an aunt living in Arkansas. There's a very bad one with us, my mother's sister. They were landing on the South Street in Gardena a few years ago. A duplex, such as they live in now. It happened to be my mother had one side of the duplex rented, and her sister was staying with her. The brother and his wife were staying in the other end. They split up for about a month. He moved out. She threw him out, clothes, and hid his clothes. She wouldn't let him come back and get his clothes. Then he had to come over to my house. I was married then, living in Lawndale and get clothes to change out and take a bath and change clothes. Well, during this about a month that they were split up, my mother and her sister were very fine court. There were men coming there in big Cadillacs and all kinds of ritzy cars dressed up, calling. Under three different names. Well, there's definitely something going on. It's narcotics, for one thing. I am definitely sure of that. Have you been in any danger other than from this robbery? Not that I know of, no, sir. Have you had any suspicions that you might think? Well, yes. And by that, I mean this way. After I moved in with a girlfriend, her nice trailer home, the Gardena, they knew where I was, who was staying. My mother made a statement before me, before her brother and his wife, before my brother and his wife. Five people heard this. She said, I'd rather see Bob dead than to go back to that girlfriend of his. She made that statement before five people. And she meant it. She meant what she said. She was mad. That is a wedding. And my mother, with the blood she's got in her veins, when she gets mad, there's no bulldog any worse. Do you take after her? Yes. It's a lot of that's inherited. But I have got much more control over mine than she has today. That is for sure, and I think I've proven that to the, all the patients in this hospital and to the doctors and nurses. I have obeyed every rule and have given them no trouble.
I want to thank you for coming in to talk with us. I hope that things will go well with you. Well, I'm very happy to be here. I've got wonderful treatment here. I'm happy here. I'm getting along fine and fast and very happy to do this well, my part fine. and hope that I have done something for humanity uh, that will be worthwhile so I feel like I've done something worthwhile. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.